Hi, Brian Clemens with Dynamax here. Today I want to take you through the 32 KD Europa. This is our brand new floor plan. This is the prototype. It has yet to be seen other than everybody that was at the Dynamax rally this year that we just came back from. Before I get started, I sort of want to throw out a challenge to sort of the industry as a whole. And either we hashtag Dynamax challenge or hashtag live through challenge, but I'd like to see in anybody that does a walkthrough or something like that, sort of list how many nights and how many miles you have with that particular vehicle. I think it is a, a great thing for all of us in the industry to actually use the product that we build. And uh, I'll start it off. I mean, this is not the first live through we've done, but we just got back from the rally and we've got seven nights under our belt, about a thousand miles. And this floor plan uh, exceeded my expectations by leaps and bounds. So without further ado, let's get started. Now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through and sort of take you through the floor plan and then sort of give you the raw feedback, you know, what I liked, didn't like, uh, maybe there's some production things that we had issues with, what I might have done to correct those, and this is a, a brand new first build, um, so if something's going to go wrong, it's going to be here and, and uh, we'll tweak this as we go along with your feedback and any feedback that I give back to the plant and engineering. So. Starting up front, this is a traditional cab over. This does lift up. One of the things that I saw um, is my son didn't really have a great place to put a lot of his things. So what I'd like to see up there, and I think we've talked about it with engineering before, was a cargo net up front there so they can slide some stuff in, whether it be water bottles or whatever. So I gave engineering one demerit for not having a cargo net in the cab over. And then uh, the cab area we won't spend a lot of time with because we've seen that before. Uh, ladder's good here. I think we could probably figure out a better way. This is just storage here. One of the things that I loved is we've packed for these trips before and we typically overpack for about a week. We were done packing and I had empty compartments inside and outside. So we never really filled the vehicle. Um, we had plenty of room left over. Now, one of the cool things over here um, and a little history, the first floor plan we did for the Europa is the 31SS. That was a great floor plan based on the 30FW, I saw the 5 series. And that sort of got a full wall slide, or two slides on that one. But a lot of people didn't like that it had a folding bed. I actually didn't mind it at all, it slept great. But people were asking for one, a fixed bed, so if you pull in just for the night and you don't want to operate the slides, everything still operates. And two, we had a lot of requests for people with a campsite dinette. So this floor plan gives you all of that. And it really, really laid out much better than I anticipated. On paper, it looked okay. In real life, it turned out great. So your dinette here, and we have a nice big window campsite. And then with the door, um, when you open that window as well, let me swing over here and open that up. That shade as well. From the sofa, you have a great view to your campsite area where you're actually hanging out and doing a lot of your, um, you know, dinners and uh, lunches and things like that outside the picnic table under the awning. Uh, this worked out really well. Up top, of course, we had tons of storage up here and these are ones that we never even got to. Um, my son likes Cheez-Its and so I made them easily accessible for him from the bed area but we never really had anything in these other two openings. So those went completely unused most of the trip. You've got USBs here, USBs under the dinette. Uh, you've got USBs on the cabinets above the sofa, USBs here. And actually my son was like, hey, you thought of me. We've got USBs six or seven, I don't know it was eight, but we forgot about the two right here in the pop-up tower. So we really probably have too many, but I don't know if you can have too many. So another cool thing about the dinette, twofold, we used to do the dream dinette, and one of the things that I hated about it was that it rattled. Even if everything was tightened down, it would just, if you didn't have pressure on it, it would rattle. This dinette top is 100% rattle free. Driving down the road, I was absolutely amazed at how quiet it was. I mean, when I'm not hitting sinkholes on our US highway system, but it's pretty much rattle free. A couple things we do there is we hem the bars on the day-night shade so you don't have plastic banging up against the windows. By putting some of the wood trim here too, you keep it away from the metal frame. And this dinette 
not only does it not have the leg that the Dream Dinette has, but it also uh, doesn't rattle. There's not a lot of moving parts to it. So it's pretty simple to make down into a bed, uh, but it also is very, very quiet. Now, one of the places my son did put his stuff was in the dinette base. These seat cushions just fold up and you get 100% of the space inside. Now, I know a lot of people talk about, hey, you know, I like drawers under the dinette and things like that, and they are easily accessible. The problem is the drawers are never really the full depth. I mean, this dinette bench is about 40 inches. So you're talking about a 40 inch deep drawer. So what they do is they typically give you small drawers that don't go all the way in and they don't, doesn't let you really maximize the use of the space below. What we did is we had a big case of water in there. My son put his duffel bag, in fact, it's still there. Up here is where he put his dirty clothes. We've got the manuals and that's where he put his duffel bag. So that's where he kept his stuff was right underneath that dinette seat. The one area we were sort of concerned about is TV placement. A lot of people put the TV over the dinette and two small windows, but we didn't want to lose the big window. We didn't want to lose the social seating area. And um, this was about the only place we could put a big TV. And it actually, again, I took a picture last night when we were watching a movie. One, we never even turned on the TV until we were on our last night of the trip and we knew that we had to use the TV to check it out. But in this position right here, you could sit two at the dinette, two at the sofa, and I actually had the driver's seat swiveled and was sitting there. So I took a picture from that driver's seat showing, you know, somebody was laid back on the couch. Um, my wife was sitting here at the dinette, legs across up the other seat. And it really was a great spot to view the TV. Now, maybe you're, everybody's watching the TV from the sofa. This is actually mounted on a swivel arm. So it will come out from the wall. But it swivels out from the wall there and you can change the angle on it, but really just being set back where it was worked just fine. Up top over the door, of course, we've got your AV cabinet. So that's where your HDMI matrix will be, your sound bar right here. And then above the sofa, we had cabinets up here as well. Um, we didn't even quite fill all of this, but you've got all that storage. You had great storage over here. Plenty of size there for big bulky stuff. Um, you probably could if you wanted to put a shelf in there to maybe maximize some of that space. But for us, it was great having bigger stuff. Of course, you have the outlet here at the kitchen. There is a lift up countertop here and you can get by this clearly with, with no issues. We actually didn't have this out a lot, but was sort of nice. On, on the 31 SS, I think we have the little cutout hole for the trash can. We don't have that here. So what we ended up doing a lot of times was taking the trash can out while we were cooking. And that way we can use all this counter space and then we didn't have to keep opening the door to throw things in the trash. We just pulled it out when we needed it. One area that I'm not sure about yet, but normally we have solid sink covers. I don't think we had them in when I took this demo out and so these were put in their place and I'm not sure which way I'd prefer to go. What was nice about these is I could roll these out just a little bit so that I still had all the space to set things. I could drain things or set things here to dry and they don't rattle or bounce or anything because the rubber uh, ends to them. So I'm not sure if I would prefer the solid surface or these which lets you sort of take away only the space that you need. Maybe in the comments you can leave some suggestions or what you would prefer. I mean, we could always do the solid sink covers and then you could do these as you wanted. Um, that'd be pretty easy. These are easy to find anywhere. Um, the other thing is, is on some of the models going forward, you'll see them be a one single sink versus a double sink. Convection microwave over the top. Of course, we had three drawers. Here you can see we have a nice drawer for cutlery or any of your serving utensils. Now, one thing I noticed is this drawer wasn't really quite soft closed. It needs some adjustment. So I gave one demerit to production for the drawer, the down one. This drawer, uh, just the middle drawer worked great for towels and things. And then below we had pots and pans and some other bulkier items. Now this cabinet was also great underneath the sink. Under there, we made that sort of our appliance garage. 
We had an air fryer, and for those of you that wonder, can an air fryer work in an RV? Uh, it worked great. We used it probably three or four nights. Uh, there was a toaster in there, the bin if we wanted to wash dishes. Most of them we just did in the sink. Plenty of space there. And then we would just store the trash can in there, and it worked just fine. Now, coming back here, sort of the highlight of the floor plan is the bathroom. Before we get there, I want to point out the uh, touch screen for the Firefly system. One of the settings that I found really cool, if you go to lighting, they have the day mode and night mode. And so when we came in, whenever it was really, we would typically hit the day mode or just master on and all the lights would go on. And then as things got quieter, maybe we were done with dinner and we were cleaning up, uh, we were done cleaning up, we would put it on night mode. And what's cool is it would just put on everything sort of dimmed down and it was great at night when you're coming in and out, um, in and out from like a campfire, or just hanging around at night. It wasn't super bright in here. And as you can see, it just dimmed everything down. You still had the accent lights on the countertop and the sort of uh, um, accent lights in the back bedroom. So you could still go back and forth through everything. But it's really cool to not have to worry about turning this on, that on. You just hit day mode or night mode. Worked great. Uh, one thing I did notice is when pushing on the panel, this was a little loose here. So I feel like engineering should have designed a stud to go in this. So we'll get that added. Uh, but I gave them one demerit uh, for not having a stud right here, knowing we're gonna be pushing on this. This was a little flimsier than I thought it should be. So engineering got uh, one demerit for that. And then something I'll mention, we'll call it a pro tip. This is a thermistor. So this is actually, instead of uh, a thermostat, this little device right here is what is smelling or sensing the air temperature. So you have to be very careful that you're not directing vents directly on this because sometimes if you direct one of these louvered vents, if you turn it this way and it's blowing right on that thermistor, uh, it will think everything's cooled down when it's not. So try to make sure you turn these away from there and that way you'll get an actual uh, better, more efficient use of your air conditioning uh, when you go along. I loved the pocket door here, or the sliding door. Uh, it locks into position right here, and then you push this down, and it closes off the bathroom. What was nice is if you just wanted to walk in and wash your hands, you could just leave this thing open. Now, I did give uh, a demerit to production. When I got this, um, it was dragging on the plastic guide at the bottom. And I didn't have a thin enough wrench with me, but I actually had just a small uh, pair of wire crimpers and there's little tiny uh, nuts right up here on the top of the door. And I was just able to turn those enough to raise the door up to get off the track. But I felt like that was something that should have been caught. It was really dragging on this one and the rear one was dragging as well, but not nearly as bad as this one. And I think they were both set up the same way, but because of the vent being there, I think it raised up the plastic guide, but I did hit them for two, two demerits or two points off uh, for the pocket doors not being adjusted as cleanly as they should have. Now coming back here again, the highlight of this coach is, I didn't think it would be, but it's sort of the bathroom. You've got a uh, 24 by 30, I think it's a 24 by 36 inch shower uh, with a glass door. And um, I'm gonna step in there, not with shoes, because that makes me taller, but I'm about 5'11", and I had no problem at all uh, getting in here, showering, whatever, plenty of space. Now, a couple things. Again, another pro tip. This shower right here, um, the head was sort of coming down on its own. There's actually a screw, a set screw right here. So if you pull this out, there's a screw, a Phillips screw right here, and you can tighten that. That way it will hold the head in whatever position you want. Sometimes it was just falling down a little bit. The other thing is the shower door. I would um, like some feedback on that. I don't love the glass shower doors. Um, these did not rattle, <clears throat> but I don't like touching the cold glass shower door. I would prefer the Arcadia, which is a radius um, shower up here, but it's a plastic curtain. Some people don't love plastic, the, the plastic curtain part. Um, it, it's a track at the bottom, track at the top, but it gives you more shoulder room. So let me know what you think. It actually does make it a bigger shower, but some people prefer glass over the Arcadia. I'm a big fan of the Arcadia, super lightweight. It stores out of the way. It gives you more entrance into the shower. Um, but again, some people love the glass shower door. Now, another area uh, of concern was the, <clears throat> this threshold right here. 
these showers are designed to leak back in. A lot of people and customers will think if their shower is leaking, seal the inside. And that's the wrong thing to do. You really want to make sure you seal the outside to push everything back in. Now the first night uh, we had a leak coming over the lip of this edge. Part of that, I'm going to actually, because I'm a user and I'm going to give myself a demerit here, I actually had the tail of the vehicle low. So what was happening is the water, instead of flowing back in through the weep holes, was flowing out back this way. I also felt like production could have sealed this just a little bit better, so I gave us both a demerit. One, for me not leveling the coach properly, <clears throat> and two, we could have done that a little better. I just borrowed a, a caulking gun uh, from another uh, camper that was there and uh, was able to seal that um, a little bit better. And it was sealed, so it wasn't like it was forgotten. It was just water was getting out of the corner. So I gave us both one demerit, uh, me for not leveling the coach properly, and production for the seal job. The other thing is uh, hooks here I would have loved. When I first came into this, the hand towel bar was over here against the wall. And I didn't love it there because we didn't have a hand towel set up. Now I don't know if that was engineering or if that was production, but I'm not gonna give them a demerit for that because frankly, no matter where we put anything, it's wrong. And so all I did was there's two tiny screws on this here. I just pulled them out, moved the hand towel over to here exactly where I wanted it. Two simple screws. Uh, it doesn't go very deep, so you don't have to worry about anything behind here. It's like a 3 8 inch screw. And then I put the Max Air fan vent uh, remote on that wall. Um, and I think if it were my coach, I would probably put two more hooks so that you had at least four tiles in here. Um, the other thing I would probably do if it were mine, and again, I would not gig anybody for this because frankly, it's always going to be wrong, is I would move this toilet paper roll down a little bit so that a wet towel is not brushing against it. But again, you can pretty much move everything where you want. If we install them, typically we're wrong. And if we don't install them, then some people are often upset that, well, why didn't they install the toilet paper roll holder and the towel bar? But again, well, we get it wrong just about every time. Now, because of the location of the toilet, this is a Tecma macerating toilet. These are very nice um, because, frankly, you don't have to worry about an open cavity to the, the, the holding tank. Um, but some people, if they boondock, they don't love these toilets because they use a little more water than you would uh, when boondocking on a gravity toilet. But I actually enjoy this one. Like it's just very solid, very sturdy, all porcelain. Um, but everybody has their pros and cons to both. So we do both. The other thing back here is they did do a window in this area. Um, it is a obscure window, so it did give you a lot of light. This area was really nice to put towels in and things like that, uh, beach towels and extra towels. And this area is where it really shined. I loved this sink area. You had plenty of storage below. There's that whole cabinet below there to put stuff. Uh, pro tip number two while we're in here, or pro tip three, uh, the Thetford uh, two-ply I feel like is way better than the uh, Camco two-ply. That's just smooth. This stuff was quilted, so I don't know if you're looking for stuff, but this stuff was great. The other stuff was just okay. You had a nice big sink here um, at the vanity, and uh, you had a great medicine cabinet. Plenty of storage space. The one thing I might change is I would probably put a bigger door here and a little door here, maybe go all the way over. Uh, because I found sometimes I would have the door open, but I lost my mirrors. Like if I was working in here somehow and I didn't have my mirror, I wish this was a little bit bigger and, and I could put most of my stuff here and still keep the mirror in place. But again, that's more of a individual user preference, uh, but it really worked out great. And we had more than enough storage than anything we needed for the bathroom area. Heading back again, right here, you've got a nice pantry. And again, we had tons of stuff in here. You've got slide out drawers for the pantry. Those are all soft clothes. And we didn't fill all of this. Like this was pretty much all we had in the bottom one. Uh, and that's pretty much how it stayed. This was full at one point, but we used up most of what was in it during the trip. But this is more for larger stuff. We had a bunch of bottles in here, um, but we didn't use nearly all of it. The fridge, this is the residential fridge. You do have an option for a 12 volt reefer fridge. This was actually really nice. This is actually something we're just prototyping out. Uh, it's called a fridge fixer. 
but it slides in like this. They're available online. It's uh, from a guy. They, they 3D print them. Uh, we haven't pulled the trigger quite yet. Uh, we're looking for that perfect fridge lock. We have some stainless steel locks right now, but the best lock would be one that just you have to press and open each time. But this works really well. You sort of, you don't forget it as easily when you're staring at it before you depart. You don't forget to do this. But you had plenty of freezer space and we had plenty of fridge space in this. Obviously it's not as uh, power efficient as a 12 volt reefer fridge, but boy, it, there's tons of room in there. And then to lock, that just goes down. It's felt back with a magnet on it. Um, it worked out really well. The only problem was I think it was mounted just a little bit too high. So the top door was pressing it down a little bit and it was just rubbing a little bit here. Heading back to the back bedroom. The bedroom was great too. The, the mattress itself is pretty firm. It's got two inches of memory foam on top. We slept in it one night. If you're a back sleeper, it'd probably be perfect. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm a side sleeper. So our first stop on the trip down after night one was we went and got a three inch memory foam topper um, and threw that on. And I gotta tell you, every night after that was absolutely brilliant. Like I slept just like I would at home. So you've got storage up over top. Uh, we put nothing in any of those. Uh, two lights, of course. Uh, but here's an area. So every coach that we design, I have a request from engineering and that is next to the bed, I want a place for a, a bottle of water. I need my phone and glasses or a book. So if you look at the nightstand here, they got it almost right. There's a spot there to set your phone down below. You see the water bottle fits uh, below that little cubby there. And that actually worked great because we drove uh, between trips or when we're driving, we left the water bottles there and they never came out, never bounced out. But we're missing a place to put our glasses. So unless you're a pirate and you only use a monocle, um, there's no place to put glasses or a book. So I actually gigged uh, engineering two, two points because one for each side, and it really should be three uh, because my wife left her book on the uh, bed and in the middle of the night, the book dropped to the floor, made a loud noise and just scared the bejesus out of me. I'm looking around thinking cargo doors are open and everything else. We'll leave it at two for right now. I think you can see on my side, I actually placed my glasses up on the window valance. Um, and that's okay. But if there was a cargo net here, or maybe if the windows slid a further, a little bit further back towards uh, the headboard and we could put another little like wood cubby or something like that down below, that would be ideal. Uh, big back window here. Um, these are exit windows and we never screen rear windows. So people that will often ask, hey, can I get a screen for the room? No, it's, it's against code because you can backdraft exhaust. But it does give you a lot of nice viewing back here. Two great windows there. Um, and then if you can come around here, this was also surprisingly well laid out. Not surprisingly, well, it, it is well laid out. I loved the window here with the nightstand. A lot of times we just do wardrobes across so it gives you a lot of space. But when you open these up, like there was plenty of hanging space and then it's so tall, you have things you could hang out below as well. So there's tons of space that we didn't even use. The lights are motion censored, which is sort of nice. I almost wish there's a way to dim those as well. Down below, you've got two drawers. Um, I don't even think she used this one. And then of course, uh, and they're cedar lined. Coming back, I did like this because we would come back from camping or whatever, and if you had stuff, a bag or whatever, we could just set it right here, sort of out of the way. It was sort of a catch-all spot. You still have three nice drawers below here. Tons of drawer space. Again, we didn't use uh, nearly all of it. This is new for this design as well. It's a new hinge TV setup. So it's on a strut, opens up there. That's actually the bed, the, uh, so uh, clearly we didn't use this for storage. That's the pillows and the bedspread that came on it. Apologize the messy bed here. Uh, that was just our, we, we keep a set basically for RV trips like this that we just throw on. So I threw this in here so that didn't get used. And I really liked how this, this strut setup works. So if we can change more floor plans to this way instead of a door hinge, I probably would do that. Uh, and it goes down uh, pretty good. Again, here's one of those thermistors. This is the rear one for the rear AC. You wanna make sure that your vents are not blowing on this particular area. One night, I think I had these, this chill grill open, so the air was flooding down here. It was getting to this much sooner, but I was still a little warm there. So I got up, closed this off, made sure that the vents were pointed away, and it was way more comfortable sleeping. So the same uh, 
cabinet there you get here. I actually had tools in here as well. Uh, clothes hanging up. I had clothes in the back. I put my dirty clothes there. And then I also had a drawer below and they've put a nice little LED light up there so you can sort of see what's going on. Uh, I loved this bedroom layout. I mean, the only thing I really had to complain about was the nightstand, which I, uh, which I could probably correct just by putting my own cargo net right there to put either a door or a book or maybe a little shelf off the front of the balance. But uh, the bedroom was absolutely great and the king bed was really more room than we needed. Uh, but tell my wife that. So again, love the bedroom layout. Um, love the whole layout of this coach. I really thought it might be a little tight because we didn't have the really deep slide. But with the opposing seating up front, we really had people up front. And so you really only had one or two people or one person really working back in the kitchen area. So uh, this also made the bedroom a little more private. Uh, again, pocket door here. This one dragged just a, just a tiny bit. But having a hard solid door, they do lock into place. And I love that it was sort of just, even when this door was open, you know, it's sort of, you're not looking just right back into someone's bedroom. So all you're really looking back is the window. So I loved, I actually loved this layout, how everything flowed. And uh, it actually it exceeded every expectation that I had on the layout. I, I really didn't have any, any layout objections to how it went. Let's head outside and we'll cover a few things out there. Okay, outside, um, starting at the front, one of the things people ask about on a, on a Class C or Super C, I should say, they always worry about wheelbase, bit longer, shorter, whatever. One of the nice things about a shorter wheelbase is turning radius. These tires are cut, uh, I believe it's 55 degree cut on these. What's nice about this is I'm in a cul-de-sac and I'm able to turn in this cul-de-sac without doing a three-point turn or anything like that. Like I can just follow this around, it almost tracks with the vehicle with the wheel cut and wheelbase. Now heading to the back you've got the side view cameras of course on the quad view camera but it's really the storage side of things. This was the front compartment that actually goes all the way through to the electrical bay. I don't even think we use this one Why on our trip I'm sure you would. Um, one of the things that's in there of course is the way safe that's now shipping with our stuff so you can sort of keep a track of, of uh, your tongue weight on your tow vehicle if you are towing a trailer. The second compartment, of course, uh, it also goes three quarters of the way through. Um, we didn't even put anything on the upper shelf, but as you can see, I put my tool bin in there. Your steps, outside TV with sound bar. Uh, we never really used the outside TV. I did pair music to the sound bar one time and we were listening to music outside, uh, but that was uh, just the one time. This, of course, is the biggest compartment. We put bins here. Uh, again, this goes all the way through, or I think three quarters of the way through, and there's a ton of, of space on that upper shelf up there. And so we were able to put chairs. Uh, we put our outdoor rug up there, and it slid in all the way. Uh, and again, we typically bend everything up so we can just grab bends and go when we take a unit out. Oh, there's also an outlet in here. So if you wanted to do like an outside cooler or something like that, one of those plug-in coolers, you have an outlet right there to do that. Heading back again, one of the nice things about the in-wall slide is it makes the slide much smaller. So uh, I can almost fit here, my wife does. But right now it's probably not raised all the way up. Uh, at the campsite I actually fit underneath. You have another huge compartment right here. Now this is where the black and gray tanks are, uh, but you can see that you got a little room underneath there as a shelf that you can put uh, flatter things. This is where I put the ladder. Actually, I was bringing back some camera crew stuff there. Uh, the one area I did give demerits to engineering and production because there's three lines here coming out. Two vent lines, and this is your tank drain right here. Freshwater tank drain, as you can see. What I didn't love is it wasn't filled in with foam, um, but maybe it wasn't designed that way or maybe just production forgot, but I would have filled it to keep mice out. What I would almost rather see is potentially those hoses lifted up and we just put a screened hole right there so that the water can go through the screen, um, but you don't have uh, mice or anything else climbing in. Or you could foam it and have it sticking out the bottom, but I did give engineering one demerit for that and production one for that as well because I'm not sure whose fault it is, but that's probably something we should have designed in or cleaned up. Last but not least, on this side, this is a full pass through here. 
It's a smaller compartment, but it worked out really well if you have smaller stuff that you don't want bouncing around when you're driving. And that goes all the way to the other side with the hose reel. Of course, we have all those compartments lit. Back side, of course, uh, we always put horsepower and torque on the big trucks. It's, uh, it's an ISB 6.7 liter Cummins, 360 horsepower, 800 foot-pounds of torque. And I had no problems. Uh, now, I didn't tow, so you're going to see a little bit diminished results there. But I was holding 65 through Kentucky and Tennessee through the mountains, uh, no problem at all. And I was even accelerating um, where trucks were slowing down. I was able to accelerate up the hill. Coming around to the back side, you've got your Truma water here on this side. Uh, again, pro tip here, don't forget that you turned on here, and I really never turned it off. I just turned it on for the trip. It's on demand, so it's only gonna run when it needs to. But you turn on right here, down is eco, up is comfort. Uh, and then in the middle is off. There's your power cord reel. Uh, you just dip it through the hole. One thing we're looking at right now is maybe one of those little uh, access holes that have the rollers on them so it'd be easier to get the cord in and out as it's feeding through uh, but that's also something you could add if you wanted to um, they're available online uh, at most camping stores here is your utility bay uh, again i love the thetford SantaCon. it makes it super easy to dump your tanks again you just pull the black first turn on the pump and then the gray tank follows behind it one area um, that i did notice is this pump here, uh, production ended up putting a momentary switch instead of an on-off switch. So you have, you had, I had to hold it during the trip. Part of me wondered if that wasn't a good idea so that you didn't turn it on and then sort of walk away. You did have to sort of sit here and make sure you're watching everything. Uh, and literally the, the tanks dump in a matter of a minute, a um, minute or two maybe. So it wasn't like I was there that long, but I did give production uh, one demerit for that for having the wrong switch in that spot. The one thing that I didn't love here is this door did not have a friction hinge and it did not have a stop and I did not see a strut. It needs one of those things. So I don't know if that should go to engineering or production. Did give uh, production a demerit there for not having the strut and there was also one missing on the other side underneath the slide. Uh, so I, that was two for not having something on the door. Next compartment back, of course, is the generator. You've seen those before, nothing exciting. Again, pro tip, instead of trying to use the little access door that Onan gives you, you can pull basically the screws and pull the whole cover. It gives you full access to everything. That's a whole lot easier to get to anything. That's if you're changing your own oil. Uh, but you can pull that whole front cover instead of just trying to use the access panel. Next up is the battery bay. Of course, in here, you've got the bin, your disconnects for solar. Uh, there's one 8D battery with room for a second, if you wanted to add that. And then up front, there is your 3000 watt uh, inverter charger, pure sine wave, uh, some electrical components, your transfer switch with uh, surge guard, and of course up front the cab. Another pro tip, we do dual, uh, dual tanks, one on each side. And if you don't have one now, get a commercial fleet gas cart or a fuel cart or something like that. Because what's great about that, it is life changing when you're on the road because you pull into a traditional truck stop and you fill from both sides. They are high outflow nozzles. So you put one in this side, you go to the other side, you put that one in and you just let them go. And uh, then you can also fill def in the exact same spot. Typically it's right next to the pump. You get the def in there as well. And you're all done in a matter of a few minutes. In fact, I got done, was climbing back in, my wife was still making a snack, and she's like, you're, you're done already? And I was. So all in all, uh, we did, like I said, about a thousand miles, seven nights. We started off at Boonesboro State Park, uh, which is a spot in Boonesboro, and there is a fort there, which is pretty cool if you've never been. And then we spent uh, several nights in, or uh, five nights at uh, the Ridge Outdoor Resort in Sevierville, Tennessee. And on the way back, we just did a very quick stop at a place called Indian Campground, just outside of Cincinnati on 275. And that was our final night. It was just a quick overnighter to, to break up the drive coming back. But it was a great time. We'll list the report card for production and for engineering. We'll stamp it on, on the end of this. Uh, but I get a report card too, because as a user, that's one of the things we see a lot of is 
not only can there be some design miscues and some production miscues, but also user error comes into play. And a lot of times those are confused for errors in the coach. Um, for instance, like I talked earlier where I had the tail end actually too low, which was letting water slope out of the tray in the, in the seal there, of the sill for the shower, and then the shower leaked. Um, when I leveled, I forgot to dump the air in the front. And so as it's leveling, I could hear the air hissing out, and I knew that it was fighting the levelers. So I went up and dumped really quickly, uh, but that's probably what left the tail end low. Um, of course, then I hit three huge sinkholes on the highway. Uh, those are probably my fault because I wasn't paying enough attention and that's what makes everything rattle and bounce around. Then when I finally figured out that the reason the shower was leaking is because I had the tail end too low, I raised it up, but at that point I also raised the tires off the ground. So that's one demerit for me uh, for raising the tires off the ground, which you're not supposed to do. And then finally, if you look back over here, we didn't have it before, but it got mentioned at the rally that they wish they had something on the, the utility side as a light. So of course I had to show off the utility light, but I left it on one night, which of course is shining right into my neighbor's uh, campsite area. And so one demerit for me for not being courteous to my neighbors. So there it is. That's the 32 KD Europa. Um, brand new, first prototype build right here, available for order as soon as this video is live. Again, uh, make sure you subscribe to our Facebook page. And if you have any comments, suggestions, tips, anything like that, please post them in the comments below.